Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I've read in the first half of November. Today's the 16th and I have read 12 books so far, so let's get into them. The first book that I ended up reading this month is called Her Orc King by Zoe Ashwood. It's the first book in her Bel Black Bear Clan series. I just saw Orc on my Libby, like my Libby very rarely has um, like alien monster romances that I haven't read yet. Also, I think it's a rarity that they get audiobooks in general. Like my Libby has all of Ruby's books. So like that's a large chunk, but I've already read all of those. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, I just saw Orc and I was like, let's do it. I didn't really even look at the summary, the ratings. I was like, Orc audio, let's go. I ended up giving this one three stars. The romance itself was not my favorite. The heroine ends up getting bought at this orc auction. She was a human slave. And um, these orcs end up buying her and bringing her back to their village where all of the orc men end up walking by her and like sniffing her to see if she will give off the faded mate scent. And the orc king just so happens to smell her and um, know that that's his fate and mate. Um, but he's very patient and kind with her. She kind of thinks that these orcs are horrible and grotesque and mean when in reality they're not. And she slowly realizes that throughout the book. Um, the couple got together way too fast for my liking. Um, I just felt very bored with this one and I don't really see myself continuing on with the rest of the series because I didn't really vibe well with the writing style also. So three stars for me. It was an okay book. Um, if you want to read like a orc romance that has audiobooks, like look no further, maybe you'll like it more than I do. I just personally didn't vibe well with me. Another book that unfortunately did not vibe well with me is called Passion or Penalty by Leah Bruner. I just saw hockey, <laughs> a hockey romance that was novella length on audio and Libby and I clicked it. I think I originally downloaded this for the novellathon that was happening in October, but I didn't get to it. And this one obviously wasn't one of my like top priorities because it was not like October monster romance themed, you know? This is, uh, this starts out with a very embarrassing moment. Our heroine ends up when she's like 18 or something, um, gets her wisdom teeth out or something happens where she's under anesthesia and like, is like doped up on drugs after um, it, you know what I mean? Like painkillers. And she ends up like <laughs> filming a video of herself professing her love to her brother's best friend. <laughs> and he ends up getting it. And they haven't spoken since that video. Well, no, he then told her he doesn't feel the same when, when in reality he does, he just doesn't want to be with, like he doesn't want to ruin his friendship with his best friend, all this stuff. That's crap to me. I don't like that. Like if you want to be with the person you want to be with, be with them. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, <laughs> was not my favorite. Very short, didn't really care for it. I honestly don't remember a lot. I read this at the beginning of the month and it wasn't a favorite of mine. So I gave this one two stars. Goodness, I cannot speak. Then I ended up reading Bethia by Ruby Dixon. This is book number five in her, her Corsair Brothers series. Bethia is not a part of the Corsair Brothers like family, but Bethia has popped up in a lot of Ruby's books. So I don't really recommend reading her book like if you haven't read the other books that Pathai is in as a side character, because you might be like, why, who is this woman? What is going on? Um, because she's very much like the trickster in the other books. And I like seeing her in her own book with her own romance. This is an FFM monster romance. Pathai is an alien. There's another, there's an alien guy. And then there's a human woman named Dora. So you have Pathai, Dora, and Jemeth. Um, it was super cute, super fun very hot and very emotional at times. I've never, I don't think I've ever read. Oh no, I have read FFM. What am I saying? But it's very rare that you get an FFM specifically in like monster romances. The only ones I've read or alien romances, the only ones that I've read are like probably like Katie Robert contemporary ones. So um, I've read a few of them, but they're not very common. So um, I like how, this is also Ruby's first one doing this, you know? Um, but I did enjoy this one again. I don't recommend reading it as a standalone for tropes for this one. It's an alien romance. Uh, Jameth is part cyborg, which was really cool. So yeah, gave this one four stars. Ooh, one that I really loved was um, Lady Venom Takes a Mistress by Kat Blackthorn. This was so fun. If you want a sapphic, like paranormal read that gives amazing gothic vibes, like look no further. This was so fun. I originally thought this was about vampires for some reason. I don't know where I got that. And I think I even like put this on a TBR somewhere. And I was like, oh, it's about sapphic vampires. It's not about sapphic vampires, but there are paranormal things like going on. Like she's not a vampire. She's something else. And I don't want to tell you what it is because it's a spoiler. Okay. Like you're kind of in the dark 
of what's going on with this paranormal creature, miss woman, and her human mistress. Like you're in like her head, so you don't really know what's going on. So this is about a human woman who falls in love. It's kind of Beauty and the Beast-esque, falls in love with this paranormal woman. We don't, I'm not gonna tell you what she is. <laughs> um, in a giant gothic castle. Lady Venom and her whole vibe, I loved her. Like I can't even like describe it. This is a novella length, like, it's like 190 pages. So like dive in. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything because I feel like, or say anything else because I feel like it would spoil it. Like I just loved Lady Venom. Like I could read a whole 500 page book just about her if I could. Like I really loved her character. Memorable quotes for this one that I have is, is a sunflower more beautiful than a daisy? All flowers just bloom. Beauty does not compete. It simply flourishes. Love that. Okay. Trigger warnings for death, killing. This does get dark. It's a gothic book. Okay. Killing, death, um, blood, SA, threats of SA, heavy emphasis on snakes. If you have a snake phobia, do not pick up this book because there are snakes everywhere because Lady Venom like loves snakes. Okay. There's snakes everywhere. Gore, there's dubcon and violence, uh, tropes, demon, fantasy, gothic vibes. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It has a monster in it. It's sapphic and it's novella. I gave this one four out of five stars. It was a really fun, like entertaining hot read. Next I have 40 Love by Olivia Dade. This is about Tess and Lucas. They meet one day on while well, uh, Tess is on vacation. Their meet cute moment is definitely memorable. Um, Tess's swimsuit top ends up getting washed away by the ocean while she's trying to fix it because it's too tight. And um, the only one there is Lucas to help cover her while people are getting into the ocean. And she doesn't know this man. She's like, I need your help. Let me use you as a, as a shield. <laughs> Lucas is almost 15 years younger than Tess and he is the tennis instructor at the resort that she's staying at. When Tess asks him for help, she assumes she'll never see this guy again. She doesn't know that he's the tennis instructor though. So she is very shocked and very embarrassed when um, she shows up for her tennis lesson on vacation. And Lucas just so happens to be the instructor. This was really fun. I really liked it. I loved how adamant and how persistent Lucas was in a respectful way. Like he knew that he wanted Tess. Tess was kind of like, why would you really want me? Like out of all the people you want me, <laughs> we have very, a lot of things. We have a lot of things going against us. And if we were together, there's like our age, um, our different types of lifestyle. We do not live together, like anywhere near each other. So um, why would you choose me? Why bother? And so she's like trying to figure that out. Uh, Lucas is like, no, I think you're it. I think you're at like, I don't, I don't care about any of those things. There's also a wonderful caretaking scene when she's on her period. And I really appreciate those scenes in books. Like I even have a, a list on Goodreads that I shelve, like a bookshelf that I shelve books on um, for period caretaking or amazing period representation because you don't read about it in books enough because like that is something consistent in our lives. So I loved that addition in here. Representation in here for chronic pain. Both characters have chronic pain and I wasn't expecting that going into this book at all. And so that was a very amazing, pleasant surprise. Um, there's also representation for plus size, um, tropes, age gap. It's a beach read, meet cute moment, a period representation, rom-com. It's a rom-com for sure. I would say that I was laughing a lot in this. Um, it's a sports romance with tennis. Um, the hero used to be a professional tennis player. It's a summer read and you have a sweet hero. I give this one four out of five stars. Next is one that I have been dying to read and that is In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. If you read Love Light Farms, the first book in the series, you would know that Evie and Beckett actually met a few months ago after a one night tryst they had after meeting each other in a bar on like a retreat somewhere in a hotel. And they are very much shocked to see each other at Love Light Farms. Evie is a social media influencer that really focuses on smaller businesses and tries to builds them up and get more exposure so they'll gain more traction. But her content has become kind of saturated and she's not really in love with what she's doing anymore. So she thinks back to the last time she was truly happy and that was when she was at Love Light Farm. So she kind of like ghosts everybody on social media, like completely shuts off from the internet. She used to like post every single day. She's like, I need a break. I need to go and find my happy. And so she goes to Love Light Farms to do just that and runs right back in to Beckett. I finally understand now why everyone is obsessed with Beckett. Like this man is fine like he is fine I want him like give give him, to, give him to me please just make him mine like he's definitely gonna be on my book boyfriend list like for sure I really loved him and how much he loves all these animals and like the duck the cats like I love it and I also really loved him with his social anxiety I related to him so hard 
Like I didn't expect him to have social anxiety either. Another, I love like that pleasant surprise that I get when I open up a book and I see fantastic representation that I wasn't expecting. Like there are books that I pick up that I'm like, oh, I want to pick that up because I hear it has a fantastic autism rep or chronic pain rep or whatever. Like I seek those out because I want to read about it. But I also just love when I'm able to open the book and just see that little spark of me kind of represented in a book. Like I, I love it. I also obviously really love the plot line with Evie and her trying to find her happy. Like that was beautiful. I really love that. I personally just wasn't that big of a fan of the ending with like the miscommunication trope. That is not my favorite trope. And I don't really love how that's used sometimes in romances. Like I feel like we should probably steer like different a different steer a different road you know what I mean when like newer romances like I, that's just something I want because like I feel like in this day and age like we are adults we are functioning adults like I feel like we should sit down and have conversations about something that we think we could have that could have been misconstrued anyway I can go on a whole tangent about that do a whole TED talk about that so like that's not my favorite part of the book so that's why it's a 4.5 out of 5 stars but I really did love it for tropes in this one um you have cute pets caretaking scene Evie falls in like a freezing cold lake and oh my gosh when Becky like sees her freezing wet in the cold like the way he scoops her up and races her home and like takes care of her like I was Swooning. Okay. Um, forced proximity because uh, she lives in his house with him because he has like a spare bedroom and there's nowhere else for her to stay. Um, one night to more, small town, a tatted hero, a groveling scene, and you have like a social media star. Again, I gave this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next is another one that's been like high on my priority TBR for a contemporary romance. This is Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. I thought this was a wonderful and cute debut romance. So this is a like ranch setting cowboy romance. Emmy comes back home to her small town in Wyoming. After experiencing something kind of traumatic, she was thrown from her horse. She is a professional like horse, like barrel racer. She's terrified to get back on the horse. And the only like comfort she can see is like going back home to her family. But with coming home to her family, she has to come in contact with her brother's best friend. Brooks and Emmy never really got along growing up. Um, never really got along, always picked on each other none the best fans of one another um but Brooks is very captivated by Emmy from the moment she comes back home all these years later and he's kind of gonna pursue it he's like I I think I'm into this <laughs> so I loved both these characters they were great this was a really cute romance but it was also very hot don't let the cute factor deter you like it's also very hot so take with that what you will and let me just say Brooks has a way with words that left me in a puddle okay I still think about him it's it's fine I specifically really love the ending and how both of them like stood up for each other in their relationships with like their family when their family figured out about each other and yeah I really enjoyed this one. Trigger warning in here for panic attacks because the heroine does have a panic attack in here. Um, tropes you have brother's best friend ADHD representation its own voices by the way which I loved that representation as well I was not expecting it another book I was not expecting amazing fantastic rep a cowboy romance small town and no third act breakup I gave this one four out of five stars the next three books are books that I read for a fall like reading vlog I wanted to pick up books that had like fall vibes for them so you can go check out that vlog if you want like my in-depth thoughts but I'll just give a basic general summary of these three books so Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean I read this as an arc it's out now you can now read it um, but this is a best friends to lovers romance with like a Jane Austen festival. Really cute. Great fall vibes. Really good fall vibes. Um, the next one that I have is Accidentally Amy by Lynn Painter. This one is um, like meet cute moment, but also forbidden. They find out it's like boss employee. Fun read for me as well as for Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Liza. This is her recent release. And it's definitely a hate to love romance. Be sure to go check out that vlog if you want to know my in-depth thoughts on, on these books. The next book that I have is The Maybon Feast by Sam Nascosta. I was very much looking forward to this because I see spider creature on the cover and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, it's going to give me ensnared vibes. I did not like this and I feel so bad. I feel so bad, but I did not like this book. It's about a heroine who's a witch. Her nickname is Ladybug. She goes by Ladybug and um, she ends up getting a new tenant like upstairs. She rents out her upstairs to somebody and it's our hero. I don't remember his name, but he's some spider creature. They live in Camber Creek where like paranormal creatures like live together in harmony with like humans and other people, whatever. I do like, like the thought of it. I love that part of it. Um, and there have been interesting books in the Camber Keeks Creek series. I think Morning Glory Milking Farm is literally a part of that series, I think. But I just recently read a werewolf one. Anyway, I was just very bored <laughs> throughout this book. It's just like a book about her like sitting in her house 
and the hero and her aren't even together, like literally see each other until like 80% of the way through this. And I was like, I am bored. <laughs> And I feel bad because I love Sam Nascosta, but like, I, I don't think her books are for me. I've only read one book that I've given four stars and all the rest have been lower and I feel horrible. Like I love her as a person, but I don't think her books vibe well with me. So I think this might be my last one, unless she writes another monster pirate romance, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that one. But like, I just don't think that these books are for me. I was just very bored. And I feel horrible. <laughs> and the last one that I have, unfortunately we're ending on kind of like a blah note, but this is The Roommate Pact by Alison Ashley. I started this book and then some of the side characters sounded very familiar to me. And I was like, wait a minute, is this a part of a series? And then I found out it was a part, like the second book in like one of her series. It doesn't say that on Goodreads, but it's a second book in, I think it's called Would You Rather or something. And I read that earlier this year for, to read a book that had chronic illness representation because the heroine of that one has chronic illness and that's this heroine's best friend and I was like oh my gosh she sounds so familiar I've read their book and I don't think I would have picked this book up if I knew that this was the second book in that series because I gave that book three stars and I didn't see myself picking up another book by that author um, but I had already gotten like 20% into the audiobook I was like let's just see maybe it was just a fluke and I just didn't really care for that first one the heroine of the story is a nurse and she doesn't really get with guys who have dangerous jobs because her dad was um killed while doing his job he was kind of like a extreme stunt person I don't really know how to describe it but he would do like these like like very elaborate dangerous tricks out of planes and like she ended up seeing her dad crash in a plane because of one of his stunts and she's like I never want to go through that again so I'm never going to be with someone who has a dangerous job okay keep that in mind um the hero of the story is one of the heroine's roommates just two roommates and um he is a firefighter and um she's very attracted to him but she's like I'm not even gonna think about being with him because he's a firefighter like no not even close he's very attractive but like no but um, they actually one night a few years ago had this like pact that once they reached the age of 40, if neither of them were married, they just marry each other to be married. You know what I mean? But then something happens to the hero. He um, gets in an accident while rock climbing because he really likes to rock climb and he is on bed rest for quite a while. And the hero, the heroine is a nurse. So she's going to take care of him while he's on bed rest because he needs like medications. He can't speak for some point for a point because um, he was intubate, intubated and so his throat hurts to talk like he can't speak his leg is broken like there's a lot going on so she's there to take care of him and they kind of have this like friends with benefits thing um they kind of agreed to it before his accident and then his accident happened and they're like oh no what are we gonna do but they still make it work okay um and so she's like how about while I try and find the love of my life we just get together because I find you very attractive and he's like Okay, yeah, no, I'm down. <laughs> I personally don't think this author's writing style or the way she goes about writing books is for me, just personally. Um, both books that I've read by her, the conflict of the story was not my favorite. It's the type of conflict that I don't like. There's like miscommunication and like breaking up for quite a long portion and then two months go by and you realize, oh my gosh, that's the love of my life. And then they go back like I... I want someone to fight for me. Like I want the, I want the fight. I want the grovel. I want that, like that. I don't, I want that. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Like this just also wasn't my favorite because I am not the type of reader to love friends with benefits. That's just not my type of like love of romance. So um, that's just me personally, my personal taste. So this book was fine. I'm giving it um, 2.5 stars, like middle of the road, very middle. I am a little disappointed. <laughs> Cause I wanted to like this cause I do love like roommate romances, but unfortunately like this just isn't for me and that's okay. And now I know like, I'm not going to be picking up more by this author and a few other authors that I've talked about today. So you live and you learn when you read books and that's, that's something you're gonna have to deal with with reading, you know, and that you're not gonna love every book. And it's a little disheartening, but it's the way of the world, the way of the weed reading. I almost said weeding world. <laughs> That's the way of the reading world. Goodness, Avery, my word. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in November. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a dog emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.